This is your 20-minute podcast, where we do our best to give you useful information in 20 minutes or less. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now, here's your host, David Brower. Hi, this is David Brower, and welcome back to your 20-minute podcast. Our guest today is Ken Bader. He's the creator of the B plus C plus S formula and the author of the Formula for Business Success. And so uh, welcome, Ken, uh, from the wonderful world of Long Beach, California. (laughs) Thank you, David. Thank you for having me. Hey, you're very welcome. So you've had some great success in reading your bio on helping businesses create environments where employees actually want to come to work and where customers actually want to keep coming back. That's magic to me and to a lot of businesses. So how do you do that? Well, you know, it it actually is pretty simple. It's not easy, uh, but it is simple. People sometimes confuse uh, simple with easy, but uh, simple can still be hard. But but the way that I do that is, is I help businesses understand their brand, culture, and strategy alignment. That is the the B plus C plus S formula. Okay. In other words, knowing exactly what is the image we want to portray out in the public, what's the experience we need to create both for and through our customers, employees, and what's the strategy? How do we drive more of the right business to our business? And so, I mean, those are obviously great questions. Uh, I would think we're having um, special ways of recruiting would be important. Well, certainly. I think it all comes back down to, to the brand and the culture that you, you want to create. So when recruiting, you know, we need to think about who is going to fit into our formula. One of the ways, and, and frankly, I'll, I'll give the, the best tip uh, right now for, for your listeners a little earlier in the show. <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot of times people ask me, well, I, I don't have time to read your book. I don't have time to go through a whole B plus C plus S formula. What's that one tip that you can give me that will at least make a difference? And that, that tip that I give is to apply service standards, to, to actually work with your team and put together a list of what service actually means here. Some concrete examples are we'll greet the customer uh, within three seconds of him walking in the door. We'll answer the phone within three rings. We'll get back to customers with any problem resolution within 24 hours things of that nature that you can adhere to. And when you have that, then recruiting, frankly, becomes a little bit easier in that you already have a very clear picture of what service means to your business, and you can look for certain qualities in people that are going to align with those service standards. Well, that makes all the sense in the world. What a, a great setup and a, a great way to understand potential employees to make sure you've got the service in place and then bring in the people that can that can fill, facilitate that exactly the way you want it day in. Day out. And it really, it really is a huge help to the new employee because you're, you're new on the job. Even, even if you've worked at restaurants all your life or you've worked at banks all your life, you walk into a new environment, especially in retail, and you know things are a little bit different. You're always a little bit uh, uneased in your first day, your first week. But when somebody hands you something like a list of service standards, and you're told, you know, this is what service means here, they have a blueprint with which to go by and understand, all right, you know, if I follow these things, your know, odds are I'm going to fit in here and do well. You know, there's so much chaos in the world. I, I do think that everybody, especially our employees, are looking for at least a little bit of structure in their lives. No question about it. And when you walk in the door with that kind of structure, you understand it. The employer understands that you get it, uh, then all of a sudden the productivity begins much, much sooner than during the old, um, compared to the old way of hiring folks. Absolutely. And you hit on the key word, David, productivity, because we don't do this just for the sake of doing this. We do this for, for better productivities, better profits and growth. And if you've done the service standard piece right, which is a critical piece to the overall B plus C plus S formula, 
your life as the owner, leader, manager actually becomes easier because if you engaged your employees to create it in the first place and you've gotten them on board, they have buy-in, they actually begin to police themselves in many ways. That makes a lot of sense. And if they're working in, uh, and I'm sure I know there's all kinds of different working environments, but if you've got working people working fairly closely together, keeping an eye on the guy next door or the lady across the hall or or what have you. There's some kind of symmetry and and ability to keep each other focused and and motivated in the right direction. Well, yeah, again, it's it's a blueprint. Right. Much much like uh, another book that I recommend, other than mine, of course, of course. is 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 the <laughs> E Myth by by, by uh, Michael Gerber, I believe it is, where he talks about putting in systems and processes, and all standards are are another process. With that process, it's important to get the team involved in creating that process so there's buy-in. When you have a process, then things begin to to move in a consistent way, uh, which is obviously the key to branding. So for lack of a better way of putting it, to call it policing, employees, peers have a way of encouraging other people. Let's use that word. To say, yeah, well, you know yeah. what, we have a service standard that we're at our station 15 minutes before we start. And yeah, maybe even, you know, the boss really you know, does get on that and it's listed right here. So if you want to stay in good with the boss, you make sure you're here about 20 minutes early. But it gives people a clear blueprint of, of what the branded experience needs to be at that particular business. Boy, no kidding. And the other thing I, I think is when you've already got employees in place that have been there for a while, they know the system, then when somebody new comes in, it's easy for them to welcome them in and make the new employee even more comfortable uh, that much quicker. Absolutely. They can, especially if the new employee immediately adheres to how business is done there. Yeah. The last thing a, a seasoned employee wants is for a new employee to make his or her job more difficult. Now, granted, yeah, I think people, for the most part, are, are decent people. And if a new employee makes a mistake, then, you know, so be it. Then, right. then we need to put our arm around them and mentor them. But at least we have a tool with which to do that. And I think, and, and this is one of the things that I, I stress, not only with service standards, but also the, the whole B plus C plus S formula, is the more you can get your entire team involved, the better it's going to be for everybody. So if you do get new employees in and you get an influx of, let's say you have a, a business of 10 people and three of those people are new within the last three or four months. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with having a staff meeting and saying, hey, here are our old service standards and we've been doing well by these for a long time. But you know what? We want your input as new employees. You know, is there anything that you would suggest that we might want to change or update? And by the way, for all those folks that have been here for a long time, if you see a standard on here that just ain't working anymore, you know, maybe we, we have an actual operational reason as to, to why we can't get back to a client within 24 hours with the problem. If there really is a legitimate reason why we can't, then let's go ahead and change that. But the thing is, is the whole team will be involved. And it's not just one more thing that ownership or management is shoving down onto the team. Team is the key word. That's cool. So S is service standards. Tell me again, what's B and C? Well, the S is actually the strategy. Oh, okay. The service standards actually help us not only begin to build our culture, because the C is the culture, but also allow us to create a branded, a consistent branded experience, which is the B. But yeah, I think that the thing that we, we really need to think of in terms of the B plus C plus S formula is that it is simple. It may not be easy. But the way that it's helped me and, you know, granted, it took me years to come up with this, David. Sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> it's not one of these things that they necessarily teach in college. They certainly teach pieces of this, but they don't teach how everything really works together in that if you have a great culture, meaning that, you know, you're providing a very good experience for your team and your customers, but you don't have a great brand, you're you're like the best kept secret because nobody knows that you're there. So do you help businesses create their brand as well? Absolutely. And it starts with not just simply doing graphic design or making something pretty like a logo. It starts with really understanding right. what your differentiating factors are, who you want to serve. A brand isn't necessarily to use a restaurant example, the logo or the signage that's outside the door. 
the brand is is that you might be a family restaurant and that you serve you know the best family breakfast and lunch that the hundred miles around. Well, if that's if that is the case and that is your brand, it's not just simply t- sending that message in the proper channels, but also making sure when people come through the door that they get the exact or better family type experience than you've been promising in all of these different marketing channels. And I think promise is the key word, right? In the in your brand, if you're going to throw a promise out there, then that's got to be consistent, honored, 24/7, 365. Absolutely. Everybody's discerning these days, uh, and everybody has very, very high expectations of what they want from from their consumer experience. If you tell them that you know, they're going to have a family experience, and you've got you know, two rude waiters <laughs> that are trying to to serve, right? And your family meal you know consists of uh, things that have all been microwaved. Then you you've right. just broken your promise. And not only are these people not going to come back, but they're going to make sure that that hundreds of others know <laughs> that that this isn't a family restaurant. Well, that's where reviews come in because more and more people are paying attention to reviews, be they good, bad, or indifferent. It's certainly it's certainly an increasing part of our culture. Where okay, I'm going to go to that restaurant. Oh, it's only got two and a half stars. Okay, I'm out. I want to go to the three and a half star one. Exactly. Um, and I forget the the gentleman's name, but uh, I believe he was uh, the founder of Intuit. Had a quote that a brand is no longer what we, the business, tell people it is. It's what other people tell that the brand is uh, for for the particular business. So you know, reviews are very. very that's why I recommend, from a branding standpoint, you know, to, to look at those Yelp reviews, to look at those Facebook reviews. And, yep. and frankly, sometimes you, you are going to get a customer, member, or a client that simply you know, didn't get it right. <laughs> right. right. And was irate for possibly not the right reasons that they, that they did. You know, the customer isn't always right. Sorry. You know, sometimes they did get it wrong. Right. The one thing that, that people that do look at those reviews and read those reviews do care about is they care that the owner cared. And I see, I've seen this you know, 90% of the time when the owner or manager answers that review, something like, I'm really sorry you had a bad experience. You know, call us or come on in and we'll make it right for you and talk about the experience that you had. Now you're not necessarily yeah, saying exactly. that you know, we as the business screwed up, but obviously acknowledging that the person had a bad experience for whatever reason. And that acknowledgement has a lot of power. It has a lot of power because the other people who are looking at those reviews see that you care enough to respond either to a critical or even marginal review that you're very engaged in your brand. Absolutely. Uh, you hit the nail on the head, David. In fact, a lot of times when people see a negative review and there was not a response, they automatically think that, or many times automatically think that that, that negative review right. is the right review. Right. But when the owner, manager, uh, executive has responded and said, Sorry, you had a bad experience. Give us a call or come in, and, and we'll and we'll do what we can to make it right. And that's the last in the conversation string. It's, it's kind of like the person who speaks last is the winner. Is that all right? Well, yeah, the, the right. owner acknowledged it. the The person who was upset didn't didn't make another reply. So he must have taken care of whatever the issue was. What's fascinating to me is with with all the social media, the Yelp, the Google reviews, all those different things. It really strikes me as the new 21st century word of mouth. Yep, it really is. Um, you know, now you can. You know, my wife and I are, are planning on a trip to New York in in a few months, and I'm sure we'll we'll go on Facebook or, or Yelp and look at some of the places that we're planning on visiting. And we're going to take a word of mouth advice from total strangers, people that we never even right? met. Isn't that funny? <laughs> but. Exactly. Exactly. That's what's fascinating to me is back, you know, you go, well, yeah, John, I love this place. And now it's, I don't know who the hell John is, but he loves this place. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It's fascinating to me. If John said it was okay, well, then it must be okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's it's the last it's the last voice in the conversation, just exactly what you said. So you've got the brand and then the culture is what the what the owner and the and the management creates 
uh, around that business and with their with their employees. So the culture has to be consistent too. It does, and, and a lot of people, you know, culture, frankly, is just a fancy word for for experience. That's why I say, okay. what's the experience you want to create both for and through your employees? If you're creating an experience that's a positive one for your employees it's going to be much more likely that your employees are going to take good care of your customers. And the flip side, unfortunately, right. is also true. If the employees don't want to be there, which I've seen in, in the cases of some businesses, it's going to be almost impossible. I've seen it done. It's very hard, but it's going to be almost impossible to have satisfied customers or clients. So you've you spent a lot of time and energy building your brand. You're comfortable with that. You've got your culture dialed in. And now you're going to get to your strategy. So what are you going to, what does that involve? Well, it's not, frankly, as involved as it used to be. You know, the days of you know, 127-page strategies have kind of gone by the wayside. So what I do and I encourage people to do is be very, very clear on their mission and their vision and their values and also tie those into some specific goals. I would actually rather them have what, what I call is a strategic map where they just have some key elements, some key objectives for the years, some targets that they want to hit, uh, specific niches of, of customers and markets that they want to focus on, and have that on a two-page document that they can post up on a bulletin board and better yet, share with the entire team and have that then have a 127-page binder that's going to be on a desk someplace collecting dust that we never look at. The, the thing that I hear from actually a lot of clients before I even say it is the, the term a working document. There you go. That things have a habit of changing very, very quickly, whether it's the economy or, or an opportunity that presents itself or, or whatever it may be. That's why I really like the strategic map idea, because if it's just two pages, it's not a daunting task for, for people, you know, especially a business owner that's wearing you know, four or five different hats a day. And right. if something really does change, positive or negative, in the next three months, four months, five months, crumple up the darn strategic map, throw it in the garbage and start from, from scratch. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So the brand, the culture, and the strategy of a business produce results, and that's the name of the game. Absolutely. It's all about knowing what image you want to portray, what experience you want to create, and driving more of the right business to your business. Ken Bader, a MBA president of Bader Training and Consulting Incorporated. His new book, The Formula for Business Success equals B plus C plus S, now available on uh, Amazon. But if folks want to go to my website, which is simply www.btcinc.net, not only is there a link to purchase the book, there is also a link uh, to an ebook, which is completely free, which is a supplement to, to the formula for business success that people can grab right away and have some tips that they could apply to their business practically immediately. Again, it's BTC, which stands for Bader Training and Consulting, so btcinc.net. Ken Bader, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. David, thank you. So you've been listening to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower and our special guest, Ken Bader. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us at facebook.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, don't forget to download your free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. That's audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast for your free audiobook. And thanks for listening to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower.